Prêt pour le défi We're about to get underway shortly in this next match. France, the home team against Ireland, the defending champions. Ireland just coming off a big win. Just previously against Norway. The umpire has balled it up and paid a free kick straight away. And it is going the way of the Irish. I oh know, he's going away the way of the French. He's reversed it. As the scoreboard restarts. And we are underway. The French kick it forward. The French have the first attack. Le Lotelier. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I may not be. Kicks it right into the forward line. And the French are definitely looking to attack this game. And they have got the first goal. There it is. Very exciting for the home crowd. The French get the first goal on the, on the board. So they lead currently one goal, which equals to six points. No, the umpire has reversed it. In the second that I've looked down, and John O'Regan will be kicking in. So apologies, that score is France one point to Ireland yet to score. Ireland in that exchange must have socketed it through the goal. French get the smother. It's very it's very curious that, that uh, the French player does not seem to, to realise he needs to give the Irish player a bit of space and I don't think the umpire has counted that score as it sails into the uh, the forward line for the Irish and number big number 20 snaps and that goes sails through for a minor score back to even scores a one point to one point the France the French player takes it out from the square plays on kicks it long into the center the big French player number number 58 78 There's definitely number 58 as I just Check who that is. Definitely the Ruckman. Who is not listed here. I'll find out who that is. Le Tellier plays on after a French free kick and he kicks it long into the French forward line, but there is no one there. It goes out of bounds and it's a throw in deep in the French forward line here. It's an exciting match as the French and the Irish are both coming off wins against Norway. And the Irish are definitely looking the better form side of the day, but the French have come out firing. Let's hope they can keep it up to please the home crowd here in Bordeaux. Number nine for France takes it out of the pack, dribbles it forward, goes out, out of bounds. And we have another throw in on the other side of the goals for the French team. Now the home crowd are obviously being supported by... Uh, an increasing crowd here. There's there's definitely a lot of people now supporting the French. And number nine takes it out, snaps on the side of the boot, and he's kicked it through for a goal. The French get the first goal of the match, and it is one goal, one seven to Ireland, one point. Can the French keep it up, or can the Irish run over them? I guess we'll find out. The Irish have def have just come off a, a, well, a, an easy match. Sorry to say, against the Norwegians as number 19 for the French. Their captain, Ivan Mervold, runs in, takes the rock, taps it out to number 75 for the French. Sorry, my apologies. That was Greg Gregoire Patak, the captain there. Tapped it out to number 75 for the French. Nicolas Robert gets it to L'Hotelier. 
kicks it in and the Irish clean it up in the back line. All the pressure is on the Irish at the moment. The French are attacking as if it's the last game they'll ever play in their lives. They want this more than anything. They definitely want to knock the Irish off and go through to the finals. There is no one there for the Irish. Gregoire takes it out, but the umpire has called it back. And Gregoire look, looking a bit confused as to what the proceedings are here, but the umpire has told the boundary umpire that it is a throw-in. And it's thrown in again, and now the Irish have someone to contest the ruck. As Nicolas Robert, the French come through. And the captain again for France kicks it deep into the forward line. The French have all the play for the first five minutes of this match. But again, the Irish clean it up and is out of bounds for a boundary throw in, deep in the French attacking forward. This is the game everyone wanted to see in the group stage, definitely the, the pick of the games. Here on field one, 39, Le Hotelier, the handball out, puts Gregoire under pressure. Again, back to Le Hotelier, some good shepherding. Kick short, probably ill-advised, should have got it long into the forward line, off the ground, skids through for a behind. For a minor score. Yes, you play. As long as you're organisation wise, just quickly play and then come back. Yeah. So the minor score, that's 8 to 1. France look like they're on top here. 27 in some space, uses the left, didn't look like he's preferred. 9 turns, breaks the tackle. No! Paid holding the ball. Looked like he got the handball away. A little bit unlucky. It's giving away 25 there as well. Really big penalty in this game to give away an infringement like that. Brings him in the scoring range and he's backed himself from about 50. Absolutely smashes that off the boot. Uh, hits the padding and that's a minor. Good kick from the French. Luke on the lead. Takes the mark. He's probably 50 out. Too far to score, I'd say. He too is backing himself from distance. Gets a hold of the drop punt. That's going to land top of the square. Island with the numbers, though. O'Regan. Oh, that's a throw. What a great tackle. O'Regan caught, trying to bustle through. Number nine, Pierre Etienne. Dandelion, great tackle. Lines up from about 20 out, needs this goal. Misses to the left. Just, just didn't really give himself a chance to kick that. It's one step, two step kick. These guys need to get a bit of momentum into the ball. And kick through it. His teammates can sole him on the sideline after that miss. He's really disappointed. It shows how much it means to these guys. 13 again with the big hoof out. Clearing the centre. O'Regan takes the mark. And O'Regan is looking for a good option in the forward line, as any good captain should. But it seems like he is actually lining up for goal. Probably maybe a little bit too far out. He booms it into the forward line, though, and it almost makes the distance. It actually does make the distance, but goes out on the full. Just lacks the accuracy there. And Ireland get their third behind again. Classic example of teams just not making the most of their opportunities. Ireland three behinds to France. One goal, three, nine. The ball goes out of play and it's boundary throw in. Still in the attacking 50 or the attacking 30 for Ireland. The boundary umpire, very nice throw in. And the Irish. Oh, it stays in. The Irish thought it was going out. And that was Kale O'Bale. Takes it. The French kicking in there to 450. But again, number 13 for the, for the Irish, Jimmy 
Jimmy Cow. Keo. Jimmy Keo cleans up. It's in the Irish attacking 50 now. And the French are diving on it. That should have earned him a free kick. He put his head over the ball. French are going in hard again. And he gets tapped out by number 18 for France. Who is, again, not listed on the team sheet. Their big backman. Very strong backline France has. Holding the Irish attack. So only three behind so far. And he gets held up again. The umpire will throw it up. It's been a very tight affair so far. Both teams have had their opportunities. France have made the most of them. But the umpire has actually, no, he's paid a free kick to number 10, Dominic Joyce, who has been a goal scorer in the previous match. He's lining up for goal now, very close, a very slight angle. He should kick this. He comes in and drives it through. Ireland get their first goal of the match. And scores a level. One goal, three apiece, nine points each. Yeah, Joyce worked that one nicely from left to right, uh, right to left, the big ruckman. Uh, we, we're not sure what the free kick was paid for, but um, obviously it was seen as being there, and uh, that draws scores level. Patak and Joyce in the ruck, both jumping high, knees in, strong contest, good blocking, 10 clears. Loic again, really likes this flank. Taken a couple of great marks here. We, it, I mean, last kick here he proved about 10 metres short. If I was a Frenchman, I'd be sitting top of the goal square. To where he heads again, rush through for a behind. It's quite predictable to his teammates, and as, as a footballer, that's what you like. You knew where he was going to kick that. They all hit the spot and just couldn't take the mark. But 13 continues to pump the ball out of the fence, looks for O'Regan. Oh, this is a set play for sure. Just time and time again. It goes. Keo O'Regan set it, set shot at goal. The French, for me, have to wake up to this. The French have to bring this back. Yep. No, well, well controlled by the umpire there. It was the Irish guy that ran into the mark, not the French. And he's just cleared that up. Now Regan goes back. He's been missing today. Can he straighten it up with this approach? Again, hooking to the left. One behind. And again, scores draw level. That's 10 apiece. Great kick out, hitting Patak on the burst. Patak down the line. Kicks to uh, Valentin Mendoza. Who's now about 55 out from goal. Surely can't kick the distance. Kicks it to about 25 out for a contest. O'Regan sits under it. 18's there, Loic. Ball dribbles over. Keo hot on his tail there. And we've got another throw in. Scores level, two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Couldn't get a tighter contest. The tension is big. The French clear. Patak with the snap. There's a Frenchman under it. Can he mark it? Oh, he's been kicked it out of his hands by his teammate. Loic, what are you doing? Crazy football there by the French. Just kamikaze stuff. Good Shepherd breaks away, handballs to himself. He's been legged, yes. Yeah, well called there. 24 for France with the free kick. Does he do the right thing here and kick long? I say kick long, sir, but O'Regan just, just sapping off a man, playing spare in defence, sits under it. You put your money on him, no. He spills. Good contest. Ball's clear. O'Regan, though, mopping up without a man. Oh, he's taking him on and holding the ball. Well played. You just can't take men on like that and get tackled, Michael. No, that's right, Ben. You can't do that, and he's been pinned just for that reason. The umpire making a very good call there, and is the captain, again, of France, Patak. Gregoire Patak, lining up for goal. He's Must quite far out. He's definitely around about 40 or 50 Can't metres out. Distance. He gets the big, booming goal, and he has kicked it, and as you can hear, the crowd is going wild here in Bordeaux. France get their second goal. It is now two goals. 4, 16 to 
uh, to Ireland. One goal for ten. And France are, are keeping their heads in front here. The umpires are deliberating in the centre. Just making sure it was a goal. And it was. And the, French are, the French are definitely making the most of their... their uh, their opportunities in this game opposed to the last game where they they had a few more opportunities and they just didn't get it on the scoreboard obviously the, the better conditions here are, are helping the French a lot there's the sun coming out the sun is definitely shining down on the French team as they are in front here and the boundary umpire throws it in it comes out the back number 9 for France kicks a goal number 9 Pierre Gundelay We've been calling him Dandelion because we can't pronounce his name. The umpire has called it. It, it is a goal. And France get their third for the match. They are now sitting three goals for 22. Or did they not make it in? No, they, they did make it in. France is sitting at three goals for 22. To Ireland, one goal for... 10 as we go to half time. Just with the game about to get underway, we just quickly got Adam here from the uh, Norwegian team, one of the uh, coaches, someone walks through the camera shot. Adam, great effort by you guys in the first game, um, leading the French, as you see they're competing really well against the Irish. Um, guess you were happy with that? Oh, totally happy. The guys played fantastically, you know, put it up to them and, and unfortunately just weren't good enough in the end. Yep. And uh, disappointing against the Irish, but now it sees you go through to the uh, plate final yeah. or the plate, the plate division. Um, to defend your plate from last year, Certainly. so um, I'm sure the boys are fired up to take yeah, that look, home. Look, we always knew it was going to be a challenge in the group, in the pools, but uh, we're up to win this plate again, so we're really keen. Good one. Thanks, yeah. mate. Thanks, Good luck mate. for the day. Back with the action here, Ireland versus France. And the French have been brilliant, magnifique. And Hotelier, let's call him the Hilton, goes long. 
Number one runs onto it. Albarn, one of the organisers of the competition, getting his first touch for the day. Here he is again. Albarn. Oh, around the head. And he does get the free kick. Albarn will go back. I think he'll back himself from here. He can kick a decent distance, but I think it'll be top of the square type action. Goes long for goal. Just drifting to the right, one behind. Will be. a goal to the Irish. Start of the game seen uh, a point for France, a goal for Ireland um, in what's sure going to be a tight contest. Run away here, the little fella kicks into the goal square. Number nine, Contest, gonna have a contest here. Oh, it's really got stuck in. That's gonna hurt the rib cage. Sliding in low. Doesn't look well, Brendan Kelly. He'd been in half the first game and now he's lost three ribs. The Irish must clear it out if you drag it in. Gotta get it away. Does, gets the kick away into space. Trainor runs out off, off half forward. The Frenchman looks to mop up the mess. He does, he clears away, clears with the left. Hits the half forward line. Here come the French. Brendan Kelly's made a remarkable, remarkable recovery. Kicking in danger. That's not what we like to see. And the fumbles out of bounds as Ben fumbles his words. And the Irish get the free kick. Kick it into the centre of the ground. They are under pressure here at the 2013 Axios Euro Cup. Number 22 for Ireland gets the kick into the forward 50. 22 being Martin Ryan. Ireland have a shot on goal. Dribbles over the boundary line. The umpire will throw it in. It's a close scoring affair still. Anything can happen. The Irish seem to have had the early run of play here in the second half, but the French have been holding, have been holding them well. And I have a feeling that the French will hold them, though obviously I don't want to speak too soon as it is in the attacking half for the, for the uh, Irish, as the French get the clearance. It's number 39, Lotolier, who has definitely been France's best player, but he gets pinned, holding the ball. It's a free kick to number 29 for... Ireland, maybe that's 27, Shane Liddy. I think it's number 27, Shane Liddy. I guess we'll find out once he turns around and faces or faces away from us so we can see his number. But he is lining up for goal here. Can he kick it? He's about 40 metres out on a slight angle. He's a left footer. Good angle for a left footer. Bad angle, actually. And it goes out of bounds again. The umpire throws it in right next to the goals for the Irish. Can they score a goal here and bring the scores back? The umpire has called a free kick to number 10, Big Dominic Joyce. And he's lining up, he's not very far out, within the 25 metres. French player is not happy about that. The captain, Gregoire Patak, definitely not happy, but he stands the mark, puts his arms up as Joyce comes in and kicks the goal for Ireland. They've brought it right back, and they're right back into it. Now the Irish are on three goals, three, 21 to France, three goals, six, 24. Again, France just not making enough of the opportunities that they've had, but they're still holding off the Irish. And I believe they're still looking like the better team, Ben. They probably are, but you've got to stop the runs when they occur. It's, it's, too, sh it's too short a game to uh, let teams get on a run. Two 15-minute halves, five minutes can kill you in this, this uh, format. 
during the group stages. So France have really got to stop the rot here. Um, number two, Fylan's back on, and he, he can play. Oh, the hotelier gets caught. Just gets his handball away. Running out there's Danny Lyon. He's isolated with two Irishmen. Oh, plows into his back twice. Don't know what the umpire's watching there. Now that's a bit of a square up because the Irish guy gets one the same. Really want the umpires to protect that. Le Hotelier is blocked with a foot. The Frenchman's got plenty of time, doesn't realise. Horrible handball. A little bit of cleanness required. Good pumping long ball. And the Irishman marks. Clears off his right foot. Hits the wing. The big man. Joyce. Fumbles. Trips on his own feet. Removes about a kilo of turf with his knee. And now contests the ruck. Gregoire sees the two Frenchmen standing by themselves. Oh, he's under pressure. Ball dribbles out for a throw in. You notice the French have got a really particular setup of uh, trying to cover the exits, but they've left O'Regan by himself. Now, don't be surprised to see O'Regan run away with this. He's a smart player. You don't want to give him space to stand by himself. Tries to tackle on with limited success. Ooh. Great tackle from the ground by number two. Really stopped the critical ball. Gregoire pumps it long. Misses to the left. For what becomes 21 versus 25. Hope we've got that right, Michael. Okay. I do hope we've got it right as well. And it's the, the scores are in three goals, seven, 25, France to three goals, three, 21, Ireland. Ireland are definitely still in this. France have had the run of play for the last couple of minutes. But still, again, they're just not making the most of their opportunities. They should really be about two or three goals up at this point. But accuracy has definitely hurt them. And it's something that they'll take away from this Euro Cup. And they can work on a lot for the next year. So they can hopefully come back bigger and better and stronger team. A more accurate team. That's what they should come back in the following year. As the umpire throws in from the boundary. That was attack again. Kicks in his offline for a minor score. Patak really putting his stamp on this game. The big man, uh, 13, Keo pumps it long again to O'Regan. If we haven't called that five times, call me silly. This is a set play, and both, all the rest of the teams... Hang on, no. Did I... Yes, O'Regan's just, instead of shooting for goal this time, decided, I've missed 15 today, I'm going to pass. And he hits big Brian Karan. Bursting out, bustling out from the goal square. And his big mitts go bang. He's gone back. He's got a really set routine, this guy. Pulls the socks up. He's marked his turf. He set his run up. Strolls in. Leans back on it and caresses it straight through the middle for a goal to Ireland. Surprisingly, the Irish don't go berserk. I'm not sure they're aware, but they've hit the front. Get excited, Ireland. That's a two-point lead, 27 to 25. In what is the critical game of this group, uh, it'll decide who goes under the cup, Michael. And uh, let's be honest, that's what it's all about. The French find themselves under a little bit of great ruck work. Straight to 24, runs onto it, sprays it. Oh, boy. Bad luck to the French there. That was cracking play. It was definitely a really good run out of the centre from the Frenchman. The Irish have it now. They kick in from defence. And O'Regan again, but no, the Frenchman stopped this time. Unlucky to get him around the neck. And O'Regan gets a free kick. He plays on, but he has to go back behind the mark. The umpire very fairly calls him back. With just over five and a half minutes left in this match. It's extremely close. There is only one point in it. At the moment, Ireland lead 27 to 26. And I feel I feel a bit like the Irish expect to win this game, which may 
be why they're not getting too excited, or maybe they're just tired from the previous match against Norway where they completely demolished them. Oregon kicks in to the Ford 50. Oh, we almost had a big mark on the big number 17 again there. And the, the good defense, solid defense of the French. Get it out. The Irish have all the play here again. Regan, oh Regan. Number two for France gets it out. Kicks it into the four line, dribbles over the boundary line about 20 meters out from the French goal. The umpire will throw it in once he gets there. He's a bit slow to the ball today, the, the boundary umpire. I think it, it might be, it might even be his first time here and there's a lot of first timers here, but it was a beautiful throw in. Gets it right to the Ruckman. O'Regan cleans up from the back line, kicks it out into the center. And there's two French player versus one Irish. And the French the Frenchman tries to tunnel it through. The umpire didn't see that, luckily. Lotelier gets it out, but the Irish have been paid a free kick. And who is it going to? Number six. Number six for Ireland, Miles Trinol. Is taking it, expecting to kick it long into the forward line here. To the big number 17, Brian Curran who takes the mark, juggles it a few times. And number 18 for France. I'm gonna guess, he's not listed here, but I'm gonna guess Loic Besnard is not happy at all. He goes back to the right of the goal line. No one's standing the mark. And he allows big number 17, Brian Curran, to just run in and put the goal straight through the middle. That was disappointing. An Ireland kick away now sit at 33 to 26 obviously the home crowd cheering their team on try and bring it back but Ireland seem to have the run of play at the moment And the Frenchman soccers it out of the air and kicks behind. That would have been goal of the century had he kicked that. But Ben, it's a very, very close affair still here with just over two and a half minutes left. Well, I think that was to a uh, question about the score. The score is definitely Ireland 33 to France 27 as it goes deep into the Irish forward line again. The French do not want to give this one up. They've had the lead for the majority of the match, but now the Irish have stolen it from them. And they obviously want to get it back with just over two minutes remaining. Yeah, absolutely. There's, uh, there's six points a straight kick the difference. Uh, two minutes to go. The French have to move this ball forward and move it forward quickly. A draw won't be enough. They require a win. Great spotting there. It says play on. The ball's up. Goes long. 27's got... Oh, plows him in the back. Yes, he's been paid the free. Critical free kick. He goes back. He wants to be quick, but he also wants to take his time and kick the goal. Kicks it. That's a goal. Scores a level with a minute to play. A draw won't be enough for the French, though. Minute to go. The French must score. It draws enough for Ireland because of the points difference in the game before. France must score. The ball goes forward for Ireland though. Misses, the, misses it. Fumbling. Hotelier, who's been best, must go forward. There's 40 seconds, France. Handballs. Kick long. 
Ireland under pressure here. 60, sitting underneath it. The Frenchman. No. I started it late. But... And there is controversy here at the Axios Euro Cup. France believe that there is still time on the clock. The umpires have called that the uh, the game is now officially over. With 18 seconds remaining on the clock, will the umpires play it on, or will they decide to call the match as a draw? Which would mean that Ireland go through and a very disappointed France obviously won't make it through. If they play out the final 18 seconds, France do have the opportunity to score, but it's looking unlikely that they will play out the final 18 seconds. Oh! And, the, and something has happened here. Something has happened, there is confusion here. The French seem to be celebrating, and we don't actually know what it is for. Potentially, the umpires have different scores to what we have. As the music sounds, we'll be back in a few minutes with the controversial decision that apparently has seen France through to the finals.